Hey guys, my name is Distressball, and in this episode of my Happy Wheels tutorial series, I am going to explain to you how to make a level with clickable stuff in it. Now this has been requested a lot to me, since there is a new update that features this tool. First I'm gonna explain how to set up a clickable trigger, and then we're gonna do some examples. Over here we've got the trigger tool, place down the trigger, click one more time to get rid of that, and then we are going to... Well, whatever you want, so let's try a sound, as you can hear. Huh. This is the sound that we are uh, going to use. Let's place a block so the character is not going to fall down. Okay, and my trigger is going to be triggered by number six. That's it. You set triggered by to number six. Now let's test it. Huh. That It's that simple, really. So um, you can place down any trigger, maybe a, a level victory, like this, level victory, triggered by six. You can click it. Hey, you made it, that's it. It's that simple to make a clickable level stuff thing. For instance, we can place down um, this circle right here. And let's say I want the color to change. I don't think there is actually a trigger for that. Um, can try to find out. Um, no, there's no change color. But there is a change opacity, which means that it looks like it's going to get invisible. And what we can just do in that case is place down another circle of the same size. Um, and let it trigger by the same trigger. So now we are going to start with opacity 0. And trigger action is opacity 100. As you can see, if I click this... <laughs> I need to set it to 6, of course. If I click it... That happens. And what if I change the color of the upper one to red? There we go. So what I can do now is copy the Y location, paste it here. Don't forget to press enter. Now it's on exactly the same position. So it may look like the color change it, but really it doesn't. Okay, I've got my shape right here and it's fixed. And now, um, Trigger action will be apply impulse, so we need to set it to non-fixed. Okay, so there's just a shape here, it's doing whatever. Maybe it's um, rolling that way or something, I don't know. And then there will be uh, an arrow pointing upwards. Now let's place this over here. And place the trigger tool right upon it. And um, as you can see, I can just click this and it applies an impulse. Now of course, we can set up the impulse a bit. So for instance, if I don't want it to move sideways, which is the X setting, I can set that to zero. I only want it to move up, so the Y. Uh, the weird thing though is that if you set Y to negative, it will go up instead of down. Um, but there's probably a reason for that. So um, click, that way you can make it fly. Now if you um, go to the trigger and set repeat type to two, that's pretty cool because you can do it multiple times. Um, repeat type 2 means that it repeats uh, upon contact with the trigger. And in this case, um, clicking equals contact. So you can make some kind of flappy bird-like level if you do that. That's pretty cool. Now, you can add another one. Um, and we're not going to use all the example stuff like uh, drawing the arrow. This is just... A small simple example but um the other trigger could make it go to i don't know maybe to the right so that would be a positive five so up right up now we can also make one that goes to the left left up and there it is right 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 up left right that is the way that those ball thingy trigger levels are made Okay, third example, we're gonna make a cool maze. So set your um, your rectangle shape settings to fixed, uh, <laughs> I mean non-fixed, sorry. So uncheck this and make sure it's interactive and collision one. Uh, you can also work with other collisions, but I find that one is the easiest one to work with. Okay, um, let's set this up real quick. Okay. Of course, we also need a ball, so that's going to be a red ball right here. And we don't want to include the ball in the whole shape. It's not supposed to move along. Also, this is never going to fit, so that's better. Let's select everything. Hold shift, click the ball. 
And now we have selected all the blue shapes. Press group items. And now the whole maze thing will act as a group where the ball will not act uh, as included in that group. Okay. Now um, I am going to add a joint tool. There we go. A nice joint tool. I am going to add two triggers. Uh, one that goes up and one that goes... No, wait. One that goes right and one that goes left. So I want to place down two blocks and then two rectangles that indicate the direction. Which for this case is right and left. Is that visible enough? Yeah, that works. Okay, so we need a uh, motor with zero motor speed and a motor torque of nine, 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 whatever. Place down trigger one. Needs to go to the joint tool. Wait, I'm going to place this over here real quick so that we can make sure we don't miss it. Um, trigger one goes to the joint tool. Trigger two goes to the joint tool. Now you select the joint tool, make sure to watch where your left and right is. So this one is left, which means that my motor speed should be negative, I suppose. I am not sure, wait, this is a standard. We need to make sure that we are using trigger one, not the standard. So change motor speed to negative five. We <laughs> That was the wrong one. So uh, make sure to place back the joint tool. Okay, small test. Okay, that is too fast. We need to change that as well. Motor speed minus one. That's better. As you can see, it's going to keep moving. So we also need to set up a go to the right one, um, which will be trigger two. Trigger two is right here. Change motor speed, new motor speed. Two, no one. Okay, duration zero point. Actually, screw the duration. It's not really necessary. Okay. We got right and we got left. But as you can see, they are reversed. Simple trick to solve this is just placing the triggers. Okay. Counterclockwise and clockwise. Now let's try to solve the maze. Um, as you can see, I cannot click this anymore because I used both of the triggers. Um, if you remember from uh, the thing I explained previously, then you could say repeat type 2 should work. And as you can see, that is completely correct. Let's try to solve the maze. All right, there we go, we solved it. That was really nice. Next thing we're gonna do is a button. So let's say we make a button out of this red thing. Uh, hold control, press down, now it's behind there. Then we're gonna add a trigger uh, on top of the button so that it looks like it's actually the shape that's doing the work. Or actually the trigger is doing the work. Now we're gonna add a... Uh, well, let's let's add a bridge instead of a door. Just a bridge, that's pretty simple to do. Okay. So, um, as you can see, it's already there and fixed. So there is no way that we can make a shape appear out of nowhere. It should already be there. Uh, most Happy Wheels authors uh, find their way to making it seem like it's not there. Where actually, you can't you can just press a button and then suddenly out of nowhere there's a shape right there. So what you need to do is make it look like that happens. And um, we need two aspects of a shape that is not there to make it look like it is actually not there. And then two aspects of a shape that is there to prove that it is there. Now that may sound a bit complicated, but let me explain in detail. So, to make it look like the shape is not there, it's not visible, and it's not touchable by Collisions 3. As you can see, the shape is, is not, it's, it's gone. Where, actually, it is just right here. So what this trigger should do, uh, go to the target, and then um, we need to go to um, make it visible again, and press the plus right here. We also need to go to change collision to one. So from three to one, and the opacity should go from zero to 100. Um, don't forget to actually set the trigger to six. And now don't use the repeat type because it's only necessary one time. Okay, so if I do nothing, I will fall into the gap. But if I click the button right here, the bridge will appear. As you can see, I placed down a second shape. And now we we really want to do the opposite thing of what we just did. So instead of making it look like it is not there and then suddenly it is there, we're gonna make it look like it is there and then suddenly it isn't. So select it with the trigger, 
Uh, trigger action one is opacity to zero. Trigger action two is new collision is three. That are the trigger actions for this thing. Um, so let's let's try that out. Click. There we go. It actually looked like it fell. Like so. Okay, some people have created clickable enemies where you have to click them uh, a lot in a short time and then uh, whenever you uh, have killed them, their health bar will have run out. So let's say this red thing here is our enemy. It's not really necessary to really make one, let's just have an enemy. And of course you need to be able to click the enemy, so we're gonna place a shape over it, a trigger, sorry. And set it to triggered by 6. Now we need to repeat the clicking of course. Okay, there we go. Then the next thing we want is a health bar. Let's just uh, use this yellow shape as a health bar. And we need this, um, this thing. Some kind of indication of where we are. Actually, let's make the health bar this color. Now I am going to add a sliding joint. Click this one. Is it interactive? I believe it isn't. Interactive. There we go. Uh, collision 2 is more useful in case you want to cross the health bar. Um, okay. Sliding joint. Now it doesn't need to go down so we can limit the range under it. Um, and the range above it should be... Wait. <laughs> Lower limit should be 0. Enter. Upper limit should be as high as the actual shape is. So 125 I believe. That should be fine. Okay. Now let's add this block as a target and the trigger action should be apply impulse. And the impulse is um, x0 because it doesn't need to go sideways, it only needs to go up, so y minus 1. If we click it, the shape's going up. Not so fast, but it is going up. Let's see what happens if I give it a little bit more impulse. As you can see, it keeps going up. So if you balance that a little bit, you can make it go up and it falls and you can make it go up again, like so. Now let's say there is a zone in the health bar that makes our enemy die, this zone. All we need to do is add another trigger right here. Then we need to select both this bar and our enemy. So let's set this trigger to react to uh, only targets attached to this trigger because this bar right here is a target attached to the trigger. So whenever it hits this trigger, we can make our enemy die by selecting change capacity zero or even delete self. Last thing we need to do is go to the sliding uh, tool and select collide connected. And what that does is it makes sure that triggers react to things that are connected to sliding tools. If you do not select that, then it's not gonna react. Okay, let's click and boom, there goes our enemy. Um, let's make sure that uh, this is in front of the upper part of the health bar. And let's click him to death. There we go, he's dead. And now we can proceed our journey in this level. Yeah. That is my tutorial on the clicking trigger. I hope you liked it. If you have a suggestion for my next tutorial, please leave it in the comments. My name is The Stress Ball. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.